still fighting with me. Oh well, I guess we're going to have a vertical video today. So there's Eustace. He is in my stairwell. Like I said, he used to be in my kitchen. But I'm going to give you guys a tour today. Uh, we've been very busy here and I want to give you the tour now um, because there's going to be a lot more progress taking place. Good morning, Tammy I, and Chad. I'm the right way, but the video is the wrong way. We'll just, we're going to roll with it. Good morning, Angela. So I'm giving you a tour today. Um, this is my stairwell and yeah, I'm right side up, but it's the wrong, it's, it's vertical. So we're just going to roll with it. It is what it is today. Um, and I'm live. I'm going to stay live. So I'm going to give you a tour because we've got, we've accomplished a lot, but we have a lot more that we're going to accomplish in the next week and a half. And um, I want you guys to see um, the mountain man's craftsmanship as well as just how he pushes this stuff out. I mean, we're doing like six months worth of work right now in the matter of a month. So it's just really crazy. And um, my hat's off to him. He's doing a fantastic job. So let me, good morning, Jill. So let me spin this around. Okay. So coming up our stairs, you can see the um, old look here on the side of the log cabin got all of the woodwork. What's unique about the woodwork here is that all of the wood in our home has come from our land. So it's pretty awesome. It's got a lot of character. You can see that we've got the ceiling in place above me here in the stairwell that was not there before. This wall in front of me was not here before. Um, so much has changed so and I think you guys will see that so I'm gonna start and excuse the it looks like a tornado went off but this is progress as you can see my new drying rack the scaffolding is in the living room dining room kitchen all at one time um, and you know what oh I can't do that right now hopefully Mona will get on I'll have to message her when I get upstairs okay so living room has all the nice woodwork on the gable end, the ceiling has been put in. Again, the rough cut boards and the look of um, the old cabin look. The walls here will have the look of old stucco um, that has, we just did a sample to see what we thought of it and that will get finished then. Now I wanna show you what he's been up to, what he's up to right now. This is my stair, well, this is my staircase going up into the loft. And <laughs> there's the man. <laughs> he is spackling. We put in a flat ceiling up there. The purpose of that ceiling uh, was to give it a little bit of a different look, but also to enable us to put in a um, venting system, which you can see above him there. There's the vent coming down and also the access door there. Thank you. And <laughs> um, we are real excited. We got out Friday to celebrate our anniversary and to take a break and also to do a material run all at the same time and visit with a new client of mine. And uh, we went to Habitat for Humanity and got all, just about all of the piping and, and that that we needed to run through, which I'll show you over here. We got all the duct work that is running through that venting system at Habitat for Humanity for 25 bucks. We bought the additional four pieces and that was like, what, 100 and something? I mean, we saved ourselves hundreds of dollars. It was insane and it was just a totally divine thing. They were closing and it was just sitting right there. So, all right, so here is some more of our mess. We found this cabinet that will go in the kitchen um, for $50. And I want to show you the kitchen right now because that's going to be one of the big changes that you're going to see taking place. And again, ceilings are in, so this is huge. And like I said, excuse the bomb mess. I mean, there's just stuff everywhere. I'm just trying to look past it. Chad said, good morning, brother. He said, hey. <laughs> um, this is all going to disappear. What's that, baby? He said, hope you're doing good and to have a good day. I wasn't sure if you could hear that, Chad. 
So this all in front of me is going to go away. This is all going to be cabinets. That is the big utility sink underneath that little curtain there. That has been our saving grace for canning and, and butchering and everything else because it's so deep. Um, so that will be going away, but this will all be new cabinets because yesterday I was on the road with the Mountain Boy running um, material run again. We found all the cabinet doors to go in here um, for $125, which will be top cabinets, bottom cabinets, and he's going to build them all. So it's just going to be really, really awesome. God continues to keep providing the materials and things. Next to the stove here is going to be that little cabinet that I just showed you that I found. This will all go away, and we will be well, like so clutter free. What are you saying? I'm going to that. This little cabinet's going to be on um, casters. So you can, if you want to use it to chop stuff up and that, you can roll it out from alongside the stove, bring it out, work on it, and then roll it back in there and lock it in place. Isn't he handy? I'm so blessed and I'm so lucky. <laughs> he just gave me the hairy eyeball. Did you see that? Okay, so um, yesterday he put the hole on the outside of the house for the venting system. All the electrical is in. The ceiling fan is going to be hanging down from here. Um, this side needs to be finished yet. Um, I hope I'm not moving too fast and giving you guys like whiplash, but um, it's really it's really coming around. I mean, there's stuff everywhere. There's my dryer that has been in the box since we moved here. We don't use it, it's a gas dryer, but that's gonna go in place. Good morning, Diana. So, welcome to my mess. Um, there, you can also see he's got lights. We've got a whole lot of new lights, and um, that was another huge blessing. We got all of our lighting for $16 a piece, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, huge savings, and they look really cool. I will show you those in a second. So he's wiping. Show them huh? the one in the living or the kitchen yeah I was gonna show them the one when I go up the stairs okay. um, I'll show you the bathroom too just so that you can see we got all the drywall up and around um, the boards around the sides my nice tub I'm gonna miss that um, and then washer is in place dryer will be stacked so everything is taking shape I don't know if I showed you guys this before don't run into the door but he made the door all the hinges, all the hardware, and um, we'll be doing that throughout the house too. There's what, three or four more that you're gonna be making? Doors? Three. The Door? two in the bedroom, yeah, and the downstairs. And the closet. Oh, and the closet, so but four. I don't like that door. Why? It doesn't look not very nice. So I'm gonna do a better job on it. Um, and it'll be, this is only like seven eighth. It'll be inch and a half thick and I'm going to have them pinned and run threaded rod through uh -huh. and it'll glue them and everything. And you won't have all these screws and everything. This is just a temporary thing I threw up. Still looks nice. But you made the, like she said, made the hinges, made the, the lock. And what's funny is people come to our house and they get a little nerved when they go in the bathroom because you can open it from both sides. And the reason for that is... The stairs to the loft used to be right here, and they went up in through the closet here. It's just a small little ladder, actually. And, you know, if one of us was in here, or he was in here, and I needed to get upstairs, that he made it so that it opened both ways so I could get up into my office. And, you know, we don't come in on each other. It's not a big deal. But And we don't walk in on our guests, but I, I get why that was a nerving thing for our guests. We're just used to not walking in on other people, but it does open from both sides and there's no way to lock it right now. So just kind of a little funny. That's my heap. That is going to be a storage closet all underneath the stairs there, but we've just been shoving stuff in such a huge way. I want to show you something else. I'm always talking about being prepared with your um, herbal pantries. That's one of my many. And you know, I've been on a healing path, so there's purpose in all that, but it's also good to be stocked up and well stocked up. All right, two bedrooms. They look like bombs, too. I am going to just quickly show you those. There's bomb number one, not touched yet, and bomb number two that's not touched yet. Those are last resort rooms that we will work on if the time allots us to. I'm going to venture upstairs now because I need to plug this in. 
and message a couple people. There's the old man. He's just like, oh my word, where do I lay that it's safe? Thank you, Courtney. She says, looking good, my friend. Okay, I'm not giving you the rest of the tour. Okay, so. There is the light. I'll turn that off so I can show you those. But this is just looking so, so awesome up here. There will be a railing that will go all the way around. He put the beam in two days ago. And the railing will come down. It's going to be a wrought iron railing all the way around and down the stairs. And... And it'll have both sides. Both sides, you know, obviously it'll come up. Yeah, this side will have And that. if I have the time, the, the spindles the, that run up and down, usually call them tickets, um, they're, everything's going to be metal except for the top, the hand part. Every other picket, if I have the time, every other picket will, in the middle about that much, will be, have a twist in it. Yeah. So it's if I have the time to do it. Well, we're going to try. We actually just saved ourselves a lot of stress today. Um, the realtor is going out of town. We were going to try to list it next Friday, and they were going out of town. Woo! And uh, instead, they asked if we would meet them this Friday to get photos. So you can imagine our panic. The last two days have been absolutely insane because of that. And we decided that our health and well-being is more important than the listing of this home as much as it needs to get done. Um, I'm just afraid we're going to literally kill ourselves falling off scaffolding or off lofts trying to hurry to get this done. So we messaged them this morning and let them know that uh, we'll meet with them when they get back. So that gives us another week and a half, two weeks to really punch us out. Because once all this is done, he has trim work to put up. You know, there'll be trim boards put up on the seams over here, here we go, over there, and all around. Um, let me turn this light off here and show you. Oh, wrong one. See those nice little lights? They're actually outdoor lights, and they're a bronze color. They match. Really, really awesome. They're from a company in New York, but we found them down um, south of us an hour away at a little hardware store a bunch of years back, and we were concerned we wouldn't be able to find more and uh, managed to find them, got them, I mean, they were already cheap. They were like 19 bucks, but we got a huge discount on them and got them down to 16 bucks. And we decided we're going to put those all over the house. These lights are not meant to be reversed, but because of his talents, some of these lights, like in my office, the base, it's going to go on the top and it's going to hang down instead of attached to the wall, which will be a beautiful thing to have hanging. There'll be one hanging down right here in that hole in the um, drop ceiling. But this just became so cozy and closed in. This was just nothing but a heap. It is a heap right now, but there's my grandfather's old treadle leather sewing machine. And my workout equipment that is just piled high, but it's okay. This is all part of the progress. Um, lots of good storage in here. And you can just get a really good feel from up here just how, I don't know, it's just so cozy. One thing I am very grateful for is to be able to enjoy this a little bit before the next person takes it over. Because this has been a long time coming, nine years, and uh, it really is looking really fabulous. So... I'm going to venture into the she cave, which is just as much of a bomb. So bear with me here. I got to fight with the curtain. Okay, so now, and I'm stuck in the curtain. Hang on, there we go. All right, I'm gonna spin this around. Okay, now let's see here. Um, bear with me because I gotta do a couple things here to get this all right. <gasps> I almost spilled my coffee. That would be bad. All right, since the screen is sideways, oh, that air feels really good. It's fresh air coming in. All right, I'm trying to sit down. Bear with me so I don't kill myself in here. Okay, um, let me see how I go about turning this. So how are you guys today? That was a quick tour. Um, aha, there we go. This isn't as painful as I thought it was going to be. Just going to tighten it down. Okay. But that is, that is what we have been up to. Whew, crazy stuff. I will be helping him paint. I was 
helping him some. I'm not real good on the scaffolding, especially when he only has two little support boards there to hold me on there. I'm not super, super good with heights. Um, huh, I can't plug this in. Bear with me one more second here, guys. Oh, that's not good, Chad. Continued prayers, you know that, but that's, that's horrible. I don't know what happened yesterday either. I don't know if it was just all the stress or what, but honestly, I did not get out of bed until like 9.30 today. I really did not feel very swell. Although I did my steps for my um, healing protocol and I am feeling much better. Um, and I'm feeling much better now that we pushed the realtor off because that was just an insanity trying to do all that needs to be finished by Friday and have it looking cleaned and polished and ready for pictures. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, we're good, but that was pushing it. That would have been really pushing it. Okay, bear with me one more second here. I need to message Miss Mona and Charles. I couldn't do both while we were talking, so what is your weather like? We have had rain, 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 rain. Yesterday was nice, which we were, we were really thankful for because of being on the road all day. Um, today's not too bad. It's not complete downpour or anything. It's just kind of dreary. Okay. Sorry about this. Today things are not going well as far as technology goes, but you know what? It is what it is, and we're going to get it done. I have a couple messages to go back on and see what you guys have been saying, too. Um, always nerves me when I leave to go do errands when the mountain man is working. Um, I ask him to wait and finish that other drop ceiling till I was home um, today so I could help hand up drywall to him and stuff because it just makes me nervous. I don't want to come home and find him laying somewhere. That's just not the way I want to roll. Okay, let's see here. Windy and overcast in Montana. I believe it. I believe it. We're in the same boat. We're getting the same junk. All right, and Angela says, we just got home from staying in a beautiful cabin in the woods for our 25th anniversary. I kept thinking of your place. Oh, very cool. Very cool. It's good to get away, and congratulations. Okay, Jill says, I think you should throw a house finishing party the same way there used to be a barn raising party. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it would be nice. It would be nice. The Mountain Boy is going to come and help me paint. Uh, we have the shed whew, to rip apart, too. I have it finished for the most part, but we need to move things around so that the things of least value are by the door so that when we load up a trailer, everything that we don't need for quite a while um, is in the back of the trailer. So we're strategically lining up the shed to quickly be able to load things as well. Trying to think ahead. Um, and I saw that Chad said somewhere about God. God is protect. The Lord is protecting you guys. You know what, guys? Honestly, his hand is so present every day. I mean, like I said, we went to um, Habitat for Humanity. We walked in there. We walked in the back, and right there was all of the duck work we needed. And all of a sudden, we're seeing them closing the gates behind us. They're closing. So we just started loading up a cart. And, you know, we knew that those big sticks that we were going to need, the big pieces, five-foot pieces, were, you know, between 15 and 20 bucks a piece. Um, what's crazy is the little vent boots are like 18 a piece, but we got a whole grocery cart stacked full of pipe, piping and venting. And the fan was in there. One of the fans that we have, we got the other fan at Habitat a couple, um, months back and we're just planning ahead to have it. We thought it was kind of too small for what we needed, but the two of them pull great. So I can be in my office now without a window open and have those fans running, pulling very low power, pulling the heat out of this upstairs, which is just fantastic, but 25 bucks. And I am loving Facebook marketplace because we found the cabinet doors and I didn't know they were brand new. 
um, but they looked like they were in fabulous shape. Went to pick them up, and here the guy said that he got his brand new cabinets delivered, and they had the wrong doors on them. So whoever he got his cabinetry from sent them all the new doors, all the slow closing hinges, those heavy duty slow closing hinges. And he took the cupboard doors off, put the new ones on and they left him with the old ones. So, you know, I was happy to pay $125 to do my entire kitchen. I mean, that is just incredible. Um, we had to pay for some of the lumber to, for him to build it. Um, which was like 160 bucks. So altogether a brand new kitchen for, under $300. It's just unheard of. It's awesome. I'm very excited. Because the kitchen is one of your big selling points in a home. And um, like I said, I will enjoy being able to enjoy the comforts of our home till it sells. We have really strong feelings that it's going to sell very quickly, um, especially with what has been accomplished here. It is just so cozy and amazing, and whoever does take it over will have such a very huge comfort spot. So I'm excited. I'm excited, and I'm excited for our adventure and our journey ahead. We don't know what it will be, but we do know that God is carrying us, walking with us, holding our hand and holding us up. And really thankful that we made that decision to just push things off just two more weeks because um, it was just, it was too much chaos. Yes, exactly. Incredible. Praise God. And, you know, it's been that way with our materials, too. You know, God just continues to provide. I got a new web client Friday um, that paid our bills. Uh, we've been getting, I shared with you the generous, generous gift that um, we were given that enabled us to buy more materials, um, pay off a creditor, and also to be able to uh, purchase this healing protocol. So God is so, so good. God does provide. And that is what we're going to talk about a little bit today. I want to read this to you. It's really, really awesome and really resonated with me. Um, I mean, this is where I'm at, and this is where I want you to be. <clears throat> this is from Jesus Calling, and I love, I love this devotional. Um, there's a link for it down below, I think at the very, very bottom. Um, Jesus Calling was gifted to me by my friend Rachel um, when we first got out here. It might have even been before, I'm trying to remember. But it's an amazing devotional, and we read it every day for three years. And it was amazing how every day it pertained. It just always pertains. And, and it's always relevant. And I love the way it's written because it's written as if God is talking to you. So it says, trust me and don't be afraid. Many things feel out of control. Your routines are not running smoothly. You tend to feel more secure when your life is predictable. Let me lead you to the rock that is higher than you and your circumstances. Take refuge in the shelter of my wings where you are absolutely secure. When you are shaken out of your comfortable routines, grip my hand tightly and look for growth opportunities. Instead of bemoaning the loss of your comfort, accept the challenge of something new. I lead you on from glory to glory, making you fit for my kingdom. Say yes to the ways I work in your life. Trust me and don't be afraid. And I'll share a link with this or a photo of this later so you guys can save it if you want. Isaiah 12, 2 is referenced there, Psalm 61, 2 through 4, and 2 Corinthians 3, 18. And that's another nice thing with this um, devotional is that it references those things so that you can go and delve into the Word, which I think is very important. We really need um, to find comfort in His Word. Uh, good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Ashley. So... Um, for those of you that are just joining, if you get a chance to go back and watch from the beginning, um, you'll see all of the updates on our home and what we've been up to the last couple weeks and um, just shared some of what's been going on in our life. But, you know, trusting Him is so important. I can't imagine where we would be if we didn't. And, you know, it's a real comfort spot when you live your day-to-day and you are able to just live your life um, with joy and happiness and going about your day without worrying about what the future is going to bring, worrying about the outcome of anything. 
I just feel so very blessed to be in the place that I am, that worry is not something that consumes me, and nor does fear. I just fully trust in his, um, his plan, his plan, um, what he has in store for us from day to day, what's ahead for us in the future. You know, we, we, we have a very blank slate right now because we're so crazed in trying to get this done that you really can't even wrap your head around what the future is going to be like because you're so consumed with what has to get done. And I'm okay with that because, you know, when we start planning our future, it's our plans. It's not necessarily his plans. So when you allow the doors to just open, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, I like living without expectation um, because it eliminates a lot of disappointment in your life, especially when it comes to people because, you know, people don't intentionally disappoint. It's just, you, it's, ex expectation is, I feel, a wrong um, thing to focus on because um, we are expecting others to give us joy. We are expecting others to know how we feel. And you can't, you can't expect that. You can't, you can't, that's setting yourself up for failure as far as I'm concerned. And um, our joy and our happiness is something that comes from God and, and our walk with God. And the deeper your walk is with God, the deeper your joy and happiness is. And even when you do have a rough day, like I said, I had a really rough start today. Um, but when your focus is on God and not your circumstances and not your um, symptoms or whatever the case may be, um, it's so much nicer because you're focusing on a positive aspect of things. If we would just focus on all that needs to get done down there instead of a task at a time, could you imagine how crazed we would be? And when we added the pressure of getting things done and uh, photo ready for Friday, it did add a lot of overwhelm and a lot of weights on our shoulders because there's a lot, as you can see, to be done yet, but we also work fast. But nevertheless, the thing is knowing your limitations and, and being in tune with yourself enough to know that um, what you may have put yourself into maybe more than what you should have um, and b being smart enough to acknowledge that and step things back and I feel that's what we did this morning by contacting the realtor and I f and I don't feel that that was a weakness um, to do such a thing I think that that is a strength in us of knowing what our limitations are and knowing that our quality of our life is more important than anything else. And that's something that we have to be aware of in our day to day because we overcommit ourselves. We um, want to prove ourselves. We want to succeed in crazy ways. And sometimes in wanting all of that, having such high expectations, we burn ourselves out, we cause sickness, we cause all kinds of havoc in our families because we stress everybody and each other out. So I just want you guys to learn to trust in Him and trust in Him wholeheartedly because there is so, so much to gain from that kind of a relationship. Funny you are talking about this cutting back on things. I see, Chad says. So, well... Like I said, Chad, God divinely gives me this. I didn't even know what I was going to talk about until like five minutes before I went live. Um, just because I wasn't, wasn't myself this morning. Um, and the other thing that I want to share today is just something very miraculous, which kind of goes along with um, the holiday weekend and resurrection weekend. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, how many of you feel like you are doing too much right now? That you are just um, stressing to keep up, stressing to um, do so much, and you're really feeling overwhelmed by it? Because if you are, there is no shame in stepping back and stepping things back and slowing things down. 
You know, I talked about it earlier in the year about learning how to um, very politely say no um, to things because sometimes you just have to. There was something that presented itself yesterday that I am going to have to say no to. And um, my schedule now with my web clients is getting very far out there because of how much has come come to me, which is an incredible blessing, and I am very thankful, and I've been there before, so I know well enough that I need to um, be really strategic in my scheduling if I want to keep my life peaceful, and that is something that is more important to me than anything else, because my family's happiness, my own peace of mind, my health, all of that matters, and like I said also all year long, we know, we need to know and have set in our minds what is most valuable to us and what we need to focus most on and not let those things be hijacked. And it's very easy as the year starts to really start progressing and the roller coaster starts really getting faster that we, we forget those things and we get into that fast paced car and it's just riding recklessly and we need to pull back on the reins and get the brakes in place and slow things down again and remember what is most important remember what is most valued to us and take care of ourselves that is the most important thing I know that all of us have been there at some point in our lives and might be there right now um, but there's there's no shame in in knowing your perfect pace and knowing when you've exceeded it and when you need to slow things down. I think that that is one very smart individual that cares enough about themselves and, and their families and whatever's going on to really um, make an effort to get back in, on track. Diana says, two years ago we had to push back our list date because it was becoming too stressful. It was necessary. Yeah, you know... I really felt like mud this morning, and um, we were really at a fast clip yesterday, running from one pickup to another, and it was just crazy, and I, I could feel the stress consuming me, but it needed to get done, and, and you know, God's got this, so we've got to trust that, and, and that's where we both looked at each other last night, we had laid down in bed, and we both looked at each other, and we're like, we're not doing this. We just can't do this by Friday. I don't want to do this by Friday. And that was the first thing I did when I exited the bedroom this morning was message the realtor. So it's, you just got to do what's most important for you. Even though sometimes society says and dictates that we need to be doing things a certain way or we have pressure from other people, you know, we have to get this listed. But we are human beings and we can only physically, mentally do so much. So, you know, I know you guys are experiencing the same kind of things, maybe just different circumstances. So I, I hope that this has been helpful to you guys in just um, planning your projects, um, taking them one step at a time, and... Also, uh, just knowing when to step back and when to, when to regroup. Uh, it's really important. So, I want to share something with you today. And hopefully you can hear this okay. Um, I've been wanting to share this with you for a while. I, the first time I heard this, and I will put the link down below um, for the full video. The full video, I'm going to share a little video clip with you. Um... The other video is over an hour long, but it is worth watching, especially if you have children. I just, I was awestruck when I saw this the first time and just amazed at his presentation. I don't know if any of you, are any of you familiar with Louis Giglio? He's fabulous. He's a pastor, I believe, um, out of Texas. Um, I know he's in one of the southern states, but um, he's, he's just fantastic. His wife does a lot of things also with the ladies and um, he does a talk on laminin. Are any of you familiar with laminin? Diana says that here's yesterday's update on Martin. Martin is moving his arms more. If you grab his hand and lift it 
off the bed. Oh, wait, it jumped on me. Off the bed and tell him to squeeze it. He curls his fingers, bends the elbow, and pulls his arm so his hand is on his stomach. He can't really effectively squeeze his hand closed, but he definitely responds by moving his arm in a much more obvious movement. The doctor today is one that hasn't really believed he was responding on command, but today she agreed. After walking from one side of the bed to another four or five times, he tracks you when you're talking, and he moved arms and feet on command. They say they are working towards being able to plug the tra un to unplug the trach, but I have no clue what all that means or how long it will take. He's great. Actually, it's... Oh, Atlanta. Thank you. You're right. It is Atlanta. Louis Giglio is out of Atlanta. And yes, he is, oh, he's fabulous. He just totally, really, really great at presenting um, the truth of the word and just, oh, amazing. But that is awesome news on Martin. And by the way, Di Diana, thank you so much because I've connected with Kim and have had conversed a little bit with her. I don't want to consume her with all kinds of messages because I know that she's got a lot going on, but it was really neat speaking with her. She is such a woman of Christ and um, such trust in God. But um, Martin is not out of his coma yet, but he, this is how he is responding from his coma. And um, they have people praying over him in the hospital when, she, when his wife Kim is not there. And just really, really amazing. And I've said from the very beginning that God is using this coma to heal him. And um, his wife Kim has such positive, positive things to say about his healing and, and um, what she is anticipating and expecting from God. And it's just really, really amazing. And, you know, the more we put our trust in him and the more we believe, the more he shows us. And it's just really, really awesome. This is a true um, miracle that is transpiring right now with Martin. And thank you for sharing that because I wanted to ask about that. I'd also like you not only to keep um, prayers going for Martin and his family. They have seven children also, by the way, and a really neat family. And... Um, Again, Diana, thank you for sharing them with us and this opportunity to pray for them. And my friend Pat, who we've been praying for, who is dealing with cancer and heart issues, is going in for a procedure on the 21st, and I would really like it if you'd keep him in your prayers and just daily prayers. His heart is the biggest struggle right now, which is giving him a hard time, and he can't combat the cancer as a result of it. So um, just very difficult for him some days, and... Um, He's such an amazing person, really like a father figure to me, really love the man dearly. So if you could keep him in your prayers, that would be fantastic. Um, Diana says she is tremendous and her faith is encouraging many. That's awesome in regard to Kim. Yeah, I see that. And the stuff she posts on her Facebook page, I was just really um, enamored because I'm always seeking that kind of positive um, material and the material she shares, oh my goodness, it's just amazing. So she was very encouraging and inspiring to me. And um, just real excited for their family because I know they're going to see a miracle walked out there. And uh, there was some other prayer requests that I wanted to key in on. Um, I have to look at our list. But, um, but that is awesome with Martin, and I'm just so very, very excited to see that happening. Uh, Layla Rose is another one. Um, if we could continue to pray for her as well as Sarah. Um, Layla Rose needs a heart, and uh, Sarah is having issues with addiction and is really struggling, really needs to seek help, really needs to see that she needs help, and is really um, just making things very rough on her family and it would just be nice to see her um, moved by the Holy Spirit to go get help. So if you could please help me pray um, in regard to her, that would be awesome. And uh, I believe it is Melanie that is uh, dealing with a broken hip right now. If we could pray for her. And um, Mona and Ken could use some prayers. They are in an extreme back pain. And our list is long. I know there was somebody else. Tammy's uh, trip to see her family went really well. They had no hitches there. And she even sent me a picture with the heart in the clouds. Excuse me. <clears throat> Speaking of which, yesterday, Mountain Boy and I were out, like I said. And I saw 
four hearts in the clouds yesterday, one of which I got a picture of. The rest I was driving on the highway, and I wasn't going to chance it. But um, I've only ever seen two before in my lifetime in the clouds, so that was pretty exciting. That was God telling me that the mountain man was going to be okay while I was traveling. <laughs> he just laughed. <laughs> You laugh. That's a great concern the way you climb around like an orangutan. <laughs> All right. I'm going to play this little clip for you. It's actually a five-minute clip, um, but it's really interesting. Um, laminin is a protein in the body. And like I said, I'm going to give you homework. I'm going to put the link for the full video down below and I would, after we're done. And I would really, really like it for you guys to watch it, especially with your children. It is just so powerful. So hopefully you will be able to hear this really clearly and see this really clearly because the screen is different. But let's see. And you won't really need to see him as much as you need to hear him. Is it going to cooperate? I don't know if it's going to... The tour was winding down last time around. We were in Tyler, Texas. The night was over. A guy walks up to me. I wish I could tell you the whole story. It was so of God. Introduces himself to me. Says, how are you doing? I just want to say hello. I said, it's nice to meet you. He says, you guys winding the tour down. Uh, where are you going to go from here? I said, well, I'm on my way back home to Atlanta, Georgia. He said, well, what's next for you? I said, I'm going to be preaching the next two Sundays for my pastor back in Atlanta. He said, oh, cool. What are you preaching on? I said, well, the series is on the glory of God in the human body. He said, that's really amazing. I'm a molecular biologist at the university down the road. G give me your talk. And I was like, oh, wow. I wasn't quite yet ready to unload the talk for a molecular biologist so I kind of stumbled through what I had and he's kind of being kind and gracious and like uh -huh, that's good and then he says well what's your big left hook you got to have a left hook a big finish right I said I don't have a left hook yet he said oh Louie oh man your left hook is laminin <laughs> and I, I'm totally blank on laminin he goes Louie it's a cell adhesion molecule protein molecule do you know about proteins? I'm like, no. He said, Louis, cells organize into certain molecular structures, and that determines what protein there are. There are between 10 and 60,000 proteins in the human body. We don't even know how many proteins are in the human body. But one of them is a cell adhesion molecule. It's organized into this certain structure, and that tells the cell what its job is in the body. And this one is a cell adhesion molecule. I'm like... All right. He said, no, Louie, it's like the rebar of the human body. The steel they put in the concrete when they lay the foundations of things, it's that stuff. It's, it's holding your membranes together. It's the glue of the human body, Louie. It's laminin. You've got to tell them about laminin. And I'm like, I promise you, I'm going home and tell them about laminin. And I'm sure when I do, revival is going to sweep across the church and probably around the world when I tell them. He said, no, 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 no. You've got to see laminin. I'm like, okay, I see it. He said, no, 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 you need to go look it up online. You need to go Google laminin. I don't even know how to spell laminin. <laughs> Takes his card out, he writes on the back, L-A-M-I-N-I-N. -I -I -N. I'm like, okay, I cannot wait to get to my computer and get on Google, click on images, type in laminin, and I'm waiting, and these little thumbnails come up on the screen, and I'm like, <laughs> That's laminin, the cell adhesion molecule. Woo! I am so excited. I am beside myself. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I love laminin. I'm so fired up. You should see laminin, I guess. That's the thing, right? Okay. Here is a scientific diagram of the laminin cell adhesion molecule that's holding your body together right now, okay? This is what I found right here. No, come on, that's crazy. That's just crazy. I just can't believe it. I emailed that guy back so fast, I'm like, wow, 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 what in the world? He said, you want to see an actual laminin molecule? I'm like, oh, no, man. The diagram was cool for me. I'm happy with that. Don't, don't bother sending anything else. I'm like, yes! 
he sends me this image, an electron microscopic image of an actual laminin protein molecule. It looks just like this. I'm like, how crazy is that? That the stuff that holds our bodies together, that's holding the lining of your organs together, holding your skin on, is in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately I'm thinking about the words of Paul in Colossians 1. You know this beautiful passage where Paul's talking about the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. He says, for by him, talking about Jesus Christ, all things have been created, things in heaven and things on earth. All things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. But then the next verse goes on to say this. It's crazy. And he, Jesus, is before all things. And in him, that is, in Jesus Christ, all things hold together. It's right, it's right there. I'm like, of course they do. Is that not awesome? <laughs> it makes me cry every time I see that. That is just so fabulous. Did any of you know that? That laminin was shaped like a cross and that laminin is what holds our bodies together. I just thought that that was something that I needed to share with you guys because like I said, when I was at the church and they did the full video and we went through that, it was just, it, I was awestruck and I was um, really touched by that. You know, God plays such a big role in our lives and Jesus saved us. And um, I just thought the two, laminin and what I'm going to talk about next, really played a big role as far as um, Resurrection Sunday and Easter Sunday. Isn't that awesome, Tammy? Yeah, I just, I just think that is so neat. And I, I hadn't heard of it for, you know, just a cu couple years ago is when we heard about it. So I thought I would share that with you guys. Um, like I said, you have to watch his full video. He is very, very... Um, empowering and very dynamic when he's on the stage and sharing and the full version is really really awesome but we have laminin inside us and the fact that it's this the shape of the cross and the fact that we are held together by Jesus um, is really really powerful and what's really also very cool is as we were watching that D McGee um, which is one of our audience members Message to tell me that Alexander, who is the one we've been praying for, who is 90, he had fallen at church and uh, tore ligaments in his leg. And because of his age, they opted not to operate. He is a very independent man. He lives by himself. He drives. Um, and he was very uh, st st stuck in this situation. Um, he, he's a very big believer in Christ, but um, to lose his independence and to be unable to get around was very hard. And she messaged and said, Alexander is home in time for Easter. Still has a drain in his leg for at least two more weeks, and if healed enough, doctor will do skin grafts. Able with help to use a walker for short distance, got him a new electric lift chair. He was able to get a haircut, and he's really looking forward to all the family being there on Easter. I love that he's finally in better spirits and actually looking forward to things. Pray, praying for healing to continue and for him to be spared from any infection. So he's also very stubborn, she shared with me, which is a good thing when it comes to healing because they want... Are you? Listen here, Stanley. He said, so am I. Anyway, um, this has just been a really cool story. He's, he's uh, really d determined. And uh, I got to share a lot with Dee and hear about um, Alexander's life. So it's been pretty neat. So keep praying for Alexander. And that is so fantastic that he is home for Easter. Because that's what I said to her. That would be my prayer. And that's what I've been praying is that he'd be able to be home for Easter. Um, so this is fantastic. Because I know, I believe he went in the hospital quite a while ago. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the exact date, but it's been a while now. I know we've been praying for him for at least three weeks, maybe four. So anyway, guys, I'm going to read something here to you quick. Um, 
1 Peter 2.24, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. The transforming truth about Calvary. This is the second one. Second, Calvary was vicarious, which means an act undertaken by someone in another's place. Seen through the lenses of sentiment or superstition, the cross may affect your emotions, but it can't save your soul. But seen as a substitution, the cross can save any soul. The Apostle Peter writes, He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. Had Jesus re reneged at Calvary, God would have been forced to sentence us to death for our sins. Instead, as our substitute, Jesus suffered our justly deserved punishment, freeing us and giving us eternal life. Substitution was historically God's idea to deliver his people from the penalty of their sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, God substituted an animal to cover their inequity. He accepted Abel's sacrifice of the firstlings of his flock and Abram's ram caught in a thicket in exchange for Isaac's life. But without question, God's greatest soul-saving theme, substitution, was once for all time demonstrated when Jesus offered himself at Calvary. Fully satisfied with Christ's atoning death, God expunged our record and pronounced us innocent in his sight. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. On the cross, Jesus became what we were, sin, so we could become what he was, righteousness. Everything Jesus did from his virgin birth, sinless life, redeeming death, miraculous resurrection, glorious ascension, and priestly ministry in heaven he did as a substitute and savior and you know if someone today um you know a police officer his life was taken uh because he was saving a child you know we would um celebrate that and we would um make sure that he is um well known and publicized for his act of courage and he should be but we put such little value on what Jesus did on the cross a good friend of mine messaged the other day and said how she's been watching the Bible on I think Amazon or Netflix and how she cried and cried when she watched Jesus get crucified and you know he did that for all of us all of us, not just one or two or select people, but all of us. And, you know, many of us celebrate it. And it has been something that has been celebrated over history. But I think that it's taken so lightly anymore. And it's something that we need to really look at, I think, and really understand what that means for us. And, you know, I just think it was so cool. Um, with the laminin and and the references that Louis Giglio referred to and how we are held together through Jesus. And we are. We are so held together through Jesus in so many ways. And that laminin just like sweetens the pot some, you know, that God went to such levels um, to show his presence in our lives and in our bodies. And I keep telling you how miraculous our bodies are and what we are capable of within our bodies, you know, so it's just pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome to see how all this stuff is connected, but also just to know how much we are loved and, and how much we have a resource to go to daily that is there for us, has taken his life for us. Um, and, and, and just honestly, like I said, how loved we are. It's very, very powerful and very, very priceless. So for those of you that don't have a relationship um, with Jesus, in Romans 10, 9 through 11 and 13, it says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So remember that. And, and, and 
if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's just as simple as asking him for one. And like I've told you many, many times, feel free to email me, message me, uh, email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. Uh, leave a comment below. Uh, also, if you need prayer, we have a huge group of prayer warriors. We have a huge community of amazing, loving people. And I'm so blessed by you all. And if you leave in the comments that you need prayer, even if you don't leave details, we will gladly pray for you and lift you up. So uh, don't hesitate on that. And if you know somebody that could use this video and would be touched by this video, please share it. And guys, I also um, wanted to uh, let you know that in the description below are all the details to the protocol that I am using, the DNRS. You can find all the details down below. Um, you can look it up by going to treyerwilderness.com slash retraining the brain, all one word. And the links are down below. But uh, if you know people that are suffering, the list of... Um, the different things that uh, can be reset, um, per se, are down below. So please take a look at that. Like I said, I have to be careful from now on for the next six months what I say um, so that my healing process um, is a success. So read the notes below. And guys, I just thank you so much for joining me. I thank you for being a part of our community. We have a lot of people joining us over um, on Patreon. If you are interested in being a part of that, where you can communicate during the week, not just on Wednesdays, um, and see different things that are going on, you can join us over there by going to treyerwilderness.com slash community. And um, I thank those of you that have joined us over there. Um, looking to really grow that and really... Um, be a light there uh, to anybody that uh, joins us. We have such a powerful community, and I'm just so proud um, to be a part of that. Like I said, I'm not the hero. You guys are the hero. I'm just the vessel that God is using. But I am going to say a prayer here and let you guys get back to your day. Thank you for... Um, being here, being present, sharing your stories, sharing your testimonies, sharing um, the information on the prayer requests. And um, one thing I do want to say in regard to what I've read today is that we need to shout it from the mountaintops what God has done and what Jesus has done for us. You know, like I said, if an officer life was taken in d during saving a child or someone's life, you know, that would be really um, vocalized in the media. And we are those vessels that can vocalize what God and Jesus have done for us as human beings and really be light, a light and a multiple light to so many people by just sharing our stories, our testimonies, how God is working in our lives, the blessings, the miracles that he sends our way daily. You know, we are that voice. We have the ability to be that vessel. And I just want to encourage you um, to not only celebrate um, Resurrection Sunday, but also to, and Resurrection Day, but to share that promise with other people and to be a light no matter if it's with somebody in the grocery store somebody in your neighborhood somebody in the daycare line wherever whatever the situation may be but if you feel that nudge don't deny it i pray that you and the mountain man have a tremendously wonderful productive and restful day thank you i appreciate that and and Greatly appreciate your prayer, sweet friend, and I wish you a good day as well with all those fuzzy puppies. All right, guys, I'm going to say a prayer for us. Papa, I just thank you for all that you are doing in each of our lives. I know and I can see your presence in everyone's life, the way you're working, the way you're showing your hand, and how miraculous you are. Continue to work in Martin and heal him. And just allow so many people to be touched by his miracle. He's reaching so many people just on that floor of that hospital. And Kim is reaching so many people with her testimony on Facebook. And I'm sure everywhere she goes. 
And it's just so amazing to see the church pulling together on their behalf and helping where necessary. So just continue to be there for their family and just to allow this miracle to produce itself and your glory to be seen. And thank you. We celebrate Alexander coming home, that he can be home for Easter with the family. What a blessing. And all that you're going to do in everyone's lives on our prayer list. Be with Pat Kenny as he goes in for his procedure on the 21st. Be with Mona and Ken with their back pain. And just be with everyone present. Just work in their lives. Allow them to be a light to others. Allow them to be bold and courageous when you put on their heart to speak to people. It's not an easy thing. It's an uncomfortable thing at times in today's society because so quickly we can offend others. But you know what? I'd rather offend somebody than leave them to the pits of hell. We have opportunities to bring people to you. And I want to use every resource we have to do that. So I want to put it on everybody's hearts today and anybody listening to the replay that when they feel that nudge, whether it's just to open the door for somebody or to help somebody who's dropped their groceries in the, in the parking lot, just be that light, not just walk by and kick a can, but to stop and help them and to pick them up and to nurture their embarrassment and Maybe learn a little bit about the person. There's always a story. There's always, always a story. Everybody has a story. And we just need to remember to show empathy and love and concern and um, just sometimes to lend that listening ear. So, Papa, I just thank you for what you did here today. I thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives and how you're going to use each of us. And I just thank you for all the answered prayers Thank you for what you're going to do, and I ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, good morning, Janie. Oh, what a good face to see floating on my video. Um, guys, I wish you a tremendous week. I wish you a, an amazing Resurrection Sunday, and I just encourage you to be a light, encourage you to trust him. I encourage you if your life is a big panic to remember to slow things down and to be strong in him and to remember what is most important to you and remember to focus on your joy and happiness, which as a result comes from him. So thank you guys for joining me. I love you all so dearly and look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday for another house tour. If you guys are just jumping on now, you might want to go back when I finish this and watch the beginning or the replay. Um, lots of good information shared and a preview of what we've been up to here on the house. So guys, take care. Have a fabulous day. I look forward to seeing you next week. Love you all. God bless.